I'm sorry. I just had it. Ah! I noticed before you got okay. too far into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's up, fourth grade? It's already October. That means spooky season is upon us. So what better way to celebrate the spooky season with a little spooky art? So we're going to make some spider webs. But we're not going to make a spider web that looks like a normal spider web. We're going to make our spider web with some cool and funky lines. We're going to add some value in between those spaces. Maybe you have some watercolors laying around. That would be awesome for this project. If you don't, you can tell mom and dad to get you some at HEB. They're only like a couple bucks for a simple set of watercolors. Or I'll show you later different ways you can add color value with color pencils, crayons, and markers. But for now, we're just going to work on the spider web lines. You'll notice that some of my lines overlap. This line goes on top of this line, and this one is over, and then under this one. I want to see some different overlapping, and I would love to see some interesting lines that you guys come up with. You can borrow a few of mine if you want to, but don't copy mine exactly because, you know, that's kind of called plagiarism. So you do you, boo. Now, some of these lines are going to be hard. This chain line was difficult. Last year I had fourth graders crying. Fr crying in the art room, I tell you. If it makes you that stressed out, don't do it. Figure out something else. Okay? So let's start with our spider web. You're going to need a pencil, a ruler, and a sharpie. Okay, so we're going to start in the left corner or the right corner and we're going to make a diagonal line. I already made one earlier but I don't think you can see it very well so I'm going to make it a little bit darker but I want you guys to make it light so that when we have to erase it it can be erased. There's my line. Now I'm not making these lines funky quite yet. Right now I'm just kind of making my guidelines of where I'm going to put those lines. So I'm going to have about five diagonal lines coming out of this left corner. So I've got one, there's two, oh my goodness, I need a longer ruler. Let's see. We can make this work, y'all. I'm going to go down, stretch it down until it goes down to the bottom. Pick up where I left up. Three. Oh, maybe I'll only do four right here. I feel like that's a good way to divide my paper. Right about there. Make sure I'm pivoting in the right, in that top corner. Okay, so only four lines. One, two, three, four. That's easy peasy. All right. Then you're going to have the lines that go across. Now, usually a spider web's line kind of goes like this. It's curvy. Like that. So we're going to repeat that, and as you get further out, they get further apart. So if you do it right and space it out, you'll maybe only have about a total of 8 to 10 lines. That way you don't have to think of too many different lines. And that one's going to go whoop, off the page. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four diagonal lines and one, two, three, four of these lines for the cross section. Okay, now I'm going to come up with some different lines for each one of these. Um, I'm going to get creative. I could do a dotted line. I could do a wiggly line, a swirly line. Let's look at the one I did before. This one I did a zigzag line, but I didn't just do a solid line. I made it... I did a double zigzag and then I added some pattern inside. This one I did a loop-de-loop -loop line. This one I did a bold line with some dots in between. This one I call my Tim Burton line. He's a director of movies and he likes to do black and white stripes. This one's a chain. And then I just came up with some other random ones. So you guys are going to come up with your own ideas for your types of lines to create your unique spider web. I'm going to go ahead and do mine, and I will see you on the flip side.
Okay, right now, looks looks kind of messy in certain places. Some places, you can't really see where it's overlapping and where it's not overlapping. I just kind of sketched it out with my pencil. Now when I use my Sharpie or my black marker to make it more permanent, I can decide which lines are going to be on top and which lines are going to be underneath. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to erase all of those pencil lines that I don't want to keep. Okay, now I've got all of my lines drawn and traced over Sharpie. As you can see, there's some overlapping, some underlapping. Is that a word? I don't know. It is now. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to erase all of these pencil lines that I don't want to see anymore. I'm going to go. I'm going to make sure I'm holding my paper when I erase so that I don't tear my paper. Sometimes it helps to go in just one direction instead of blah, 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 all over the place. Or sometimes it's just satisfying to go back and forth all over the place. Just be careful is what I'm trying to tell you. Don't rip your paper because then we'll have to do it all over again. Now, if you want to draw a spider, you can draw him or her wherever you want. I've got some big open spaces down here. I could put one right here. Don't put it right in the middle. That always makes your eyes go boop right to the middle of your paper, and it doesn't look at anything else that you've done anywhere else. So try to put it somewhere around the edge. I'm going to put mine right here, and I'm going to have it hanging upside down. So we're going to have the main part of the spider is the big part, the back part, right? And then they've got their head right here. Depends on how many eyes you want to give them. Some spiders have many eyes. I'm going to give her some teeth. Mine's going to be a black widow, so you know how they are. They like to bite. So I've got one leg coming down. Boop. Another set of legs coming down, and then two sets of legs going back because spiders have eight legs. And if you're drawing a black widow, they have a very skinny waist, and they have an hourglass, a red hourglass shape on their back. If you ever see one of those, call mom or dad. So help mom! Okay. I'm going to trace that in Sharpie as well. Maybe even color it in with Sharpie or my black marker. We are done with part one. Part one. Let's do a review. We started with our diagonal lines. I have one, two, three, four. And then I have one, two, three, four diagonal lines going across the other way. Draw light until you get it right. And then you make it darker with a marker. Remember, I want to see some overlapping. That means some lines on top of others and some lines underneath others. You can use some of my lines if you'd like to. Don't copy it exactly or I will call you out on Schoology. I'll be like, did you copy my artwork? Alright, then when you're done this is where you're going to stop until next week when we will add the color in the spaces in between. And I will see you then.